When I received this package from Chris England a few days ago, uh, I was just overwhelmed in terms of how generous this was. And I really appreciated his letter where um, he said that uh, he gave this gift to me as an expression of how grateful he is to me for making his daily life a bit brighter. And I, I just thought that was great. You know, you don't really have an opportunity to impact someone's life uh, that much. And I think one of the real measures of success in life and even in YouTube here is not really as much about uh, subscriptions and the metrics of measuring success in that way, but it's more about how you're able to influence people. I think people are the most important denominator there. I've always tried to maintain this uh, focus of helping people to be more creative, helping them to work with their tools and understand the tools and to be able to use them for creative means. And in the case of typewriters, there are other YouTube channels that are certainly more suited to understanding the technical ins and outs of servicing typewriters. For instance, Typewriter Justice and Phoenix Typewriter, both of those channels are great for the technical knowledge of typewriters. I'm not a professional typewriter servicer like those other two gentlemen are, so my focus really more is about a typewriter lifestyle and the lifestyle of creativity and how these tools enable us to be uh, more creative. And so I really am uh, overwhelmed by Chris's uh, gift of this Triumph Norm 6 typewriter, which you might have seen in episode 159 in this series just yesterday. So today's video picks off in the middle of yesterday's video where I show in detail how I serviced this typewriter. When I received it and unboxed it, it was clearly evident that the typewriter had been packaged properly. Of course, Chris did a great job, but the typewriter was old and it was very much dirty with uh, hardened greases and lubricants. And I spent probably over six hours, maybe seven or eight hours actually, uh, servicing it yesterday. And I've typed with it fairly extensively yesterday evening. There are, now that the typewriter is sort of sad and some of the lubricants have evaporated and it's dried out a little bit, there are a few type bars that are hanging up a little bit still. So I'm going to have to this morning flush out the segment with a little bit more lacquer thinner. And uh, other than that, though, we'll cut to the footage I shot yesterday of servicing the Triumph Norm 6 typewriter. I hope you enjoy it. So the carriage moves rather roughly. So my initial temptation is to use some uh, PB Blaster. So I need to get my little plastic straw into this. This carriage feels really rough and almost as if there's something else going on with it. I want to hit the the rotation of the spring motor and I want to hit the um, escapement mechanism down below. I'm just going to drench it. That certainly feels a lot smoother now. It actually spaces now. So I'm going to put some PB Blaster into the slots of the segment and each one of these is going to need to be freed up so it'll be a, a long process of working with these tight bars, letting the degreaser soak in. Okay, so I'm going to try uh, removing the top panel, which appears to me to be made of Bakelite. And I'll show you why in a minute. It appears that somebody in the past has tried to remove this panel and cracked two of the corners of the Bakelite, because the Bakelite, of course, is a very fragile uh, polymer. Right here in the corners, you see these cracks here, and there's one over here. Someone tried flipping up this cover without knowing that there were extra screws to be replaced, to be removed. And actually, you can see how the cover pulls off, and somebody has cracked the Bakelite. So I guess I'm just going to leave the corners in place, since the 
they're already broken I'll just probably leave those there that at least uh, gains access more to the mechanism here there's quite a bit of insulation sound insulation on the sides here that's almost a centimeter thick pretty impressive all this gunk underneath the uh, ribbon vibrator this linkage rod that does the auto reversing back and forth look at the uh, old greases and ink and residue build up well I've moved this cleaning operation outdoors because uh, I have some lacquer thinner I just went up to the hardware store bought a can of lacquer thinner and then the trick or the challenge with cleaning these typewriters is the right kind of brushes you never can find them stiff enough and thin enough I went to the auto parts store got some of these angled kind of brushes but I think they're not going to be quite the right angle so when I went to the beauty supply store to get the squirt bottles I got this coloring brush and it's kind of stiff so that's what I'm hoping we'll get into the segment slots like this kind of a brush but it's uh, plastic bristles I don't really know how it's going to hold up with the uh, lacquer thinner we'll find out here I'm going to try to hit this area with lacquer thinner in the segment and then try to try to get these bristles of the brush down into here and of course I'm doing this outside because the, the, the vapors from the lacquer thinner are pretty noxious and also they're flammable and I have a hot water heater in my garage with an open flame so you know that whole thing the uh, safety aspect of it so if you guys really are interested in a very thorough professional ways of cleaning typewriters I would advise you to go over to Phoenix typewriters channel and he has a number of really good videos on how to clean typewriters these keys a lot of them are still stuck I don't want to retract well using the plastic coloring brush and this brass automotive brush with lacquer thinner I was able to get the ASDF row so they pretty much except for the couple like the I think the K wants to not bounce back but so it looks like I just need to do more thorough cleaning between all of the uh, slots in here and try to clean it up better but also underneath there's uh, some linkages as well and those I have to get to as well well okay I did a lot of cleaning on it uh, with uh, lacquer thinner and isopropyl alcohol outside and so now we're back inside it's warm now in here it was cold outside did a lot more cleaning and uh, looking at this ribbon vibrator I'm still not convinced it's working absolutely properly but what I had to do is the uh, universal bar I can flip this over the universal bar is this piece right here and it's activated by the keys and it rotates um, this shaft right here which you might be able to see is trying to turn a little bit but uh, as the universal bar moves it rotates this shaft which down in there pushes up a linkage that raises the vibrator and there's pivot points on this shaft here like right here and down in here and also pivot points for the the actual universal bar linkage that were all gummed up and I had to hit those really good with some lacquer thinner and alcohol and everything I haven't put any oil in it yet I'm gonna probably do that now in a minute but I do want to try putting in a ribbon and seeing basically how it looks when it types so my vibrator looks like it's going up and down now I also had a problem with the um, Let's see, this ribbon spool turns, but this one wasn't turning. Both of these cogs needed to be degreased underneath so they, they freewheel better. But this one, this little arm right in here that does the movement, it needed to be bent in a little bit so it would engage the teeth like that. So, you know, fundamentally it looks like everything is kind of now working basically enough for me to put a ribbon on it and check it out. I have a slightly used red black ribbon on plastic universal spools but they don't fit on the shafts of the 
typewriter here, so I'm going to use the original metal spools. So the way these ribbon spools work is there is a central clamp that hinges up like that. The ribbon goes underneath it into the slot down in there, and then you lower the clamp down. It has two teeth on it. You lower down, it cinches the ribbon, and then there's this little rotating arm that you rotate from below, and you rotate it into position, and it locks that clamp into place right there. So once you have the clamping thing set in there, then it's just a matter of winding up the ribbon. The hole and the pin has to be lined up on each one so that they go down so that the shaft is flush with the top of the spool. It has to go behind the two middle guides, close to the platen, and then into the loop guide. Okay, the paper is a little bit dampened with probably residual solvents and stuff. Let's set our margin on the left. Okay, let's see what we get. Put it on the black setting. Oh. Well, it's not really um, too bad, actually. Looks like the letter E doesn't imprint properly. Okay, I want to show you both of these lowercase e's. Uh, this one on the right is the one that it normally prints where the bottom of it's missing and it's a little bit lower. This one is normally aligned and the full letter is formed. And what happened there, what I found the cause to be, is the type slug, the solder on the type slug is cracked and so you can actually slightly move it up into position where it should be there. So I'm going to have to either break out my high wattage soldering iron or a little torch and try to re-solder that. So I am going to use some rosin core solder, the kind you would use for electronics, and I'm going to use some liquid solder flux on the uh, type bar, type slug, to hopefully get the uh, solder to stick. Probably going to have to be cleaned off with a little bit of alcohol or something afterwards. All right, let's see what happens here. Basically heated up the back edge of it, and hopefully it's in the right position. Let's test it, shall we? Hey, that looks nice. Looky there. Looks like I fixed it. And to answer my earlier question, this key right here is the only dead key on the keyboard. It does like an accent mark. Okay, it intermittently would not line advance when you did a carriage return. So there is a, you take this spring off here and there is a nut you loosen and take off and then this bolt unscrews and you can take off the carriage return arm, fold it forward and get down into the mechanism and just be, basically need to be cleaned and degreased and uh, Looks like she's advancing pretty good now. Now the other problem is the bell isn't dinging, and so I took the back panel off here, just with uh, four screws, removes the back panel. And up in here is this little pivoting arm. There's a main pivoting arm, and then it has a smaller one that's spring-loaded, like that. And the pivots are all gummed up with hardened greases, and so this pivoting arm was just folded down like that. This little extension here on the right margin adjustment that hits it just was missing it completely. So I'm going to basically have to just degrease all this, and get this bell pivot working better. And while we're at it, there's still a lot of grime in the escapement mechanism. I believe I got the backspacer just working for no particular reason, just by, just decided to work. But it does need probably to be degreased. Yeah, I can see the pivot in there for the backspacer. This arm right here that's moving. It slides in a groove and uh, that all, whole thing just needs to be degreased. Child's toothbrush is a really good tool to have because it's shorter, a little skinnier than a regular toothbrush. Just getting all this hardened grease off. 
Well, I'm wanting to uh, clean off this table back here, so first of all I removed this bale here by taking off the two bolts from the insides here and here. Now that gives me access, I think, to the screws. There's one that's easy to access here and one back here. And with those screws removed, this pulls out completely. I can clean it. The uh, paper support I can clean up and everything. And this also gives me an opportunity to clean up where the margin adjustments are. Clean it up and hopefully make it work a little bit better. These things are now nice and free to slide. They glide like silk. Okay, this back paper table I reinstalled by putting the two screws back into it. And then this bale goes in with these little brackets pointing up. The piece on the left, the extension, goes behind the pivot here for the paper bale. You don't want to tighten it all the way, but put it in there a good amount. And then, there we go. So these you can rotate back, support the edges of the paper, like that. As far as servicing uh, the typewriter yesterday, I got it into a pretty good working state, but there are just a couple issues remaining. First of all, after the typewriter sat overnight and some of the lighter solvents uh, and oils evaporated, there are some type bars that are starting to hang up again intermittently, and so I'm going to need to flush out the segment a little bit more with lacquer thinner and blow it out with some compressed air and kind of repeatedly do that. So other than that though, the only thing really major is some of the type bars, the, the type alignment is off on some of the characters. I'm not really sure if I want to really tackle that. I think the letter A I could probably do. It's, it's sitting low. Well, I can see the advantage of living in Phoenix if you had to do this outdoors in the wintertime. It's not, what is this, 25, 30 degrees out here? Kind of cold. Well, I got my air compressor set up and I got the typewriter on the little table there with some lacquer thinner and my brush and uh, some rags and I'm going to sit out here in the cold and try to clean this typewriter a little bit better, the segment. Um, I'm going to try covering all the panels and keyboard and carriage with rags so I don't get lacquer thinner on the anything else. Okay, try to cover as much of this as I can. That's why you always have to have a bag of rags. It's always handy to have. And to protect the sides of the typewriter, go like that with it. It's just like dressing a patient for surgery. Okay, lacquer thinner brush. Oh, I understand being cold out here that uh, there's less chance that the lacquer thinner is going to soften up the greases. It'll take a little bit more effort. The keys mainly on the left side of the keyboard that were sticking, which is kind of unusual, but maybe not so unusual. This number three key, still a little stubborn, the five. The V key was sticking pretty badly, but it looks like it's good. So I think all I got right now is the number three. Let's try the right side of the keyboard. Well, I think the right side is good. It's just this number three now, so sort of work it into the joint, especially good. Okay, it's a little warmer here in the garage. I got my space heater running. If you hear a little background noise, that's what it's going on there. So what I've done here is I have put the old ribbon back in, the used ribbon, and I'm going to uh, start working on getting this uh, type alignment on the on the letter A set here. So I don't have an actual set of true uh, typewriter mechanics tools, but for basically working on the letter A, or any of the letters that are out near the end of the segment, you notice when the type bar moves up close to the print position, the type bar is actually angled at a 45 degree angle. And so 
If you want to raise or lower the printing position while keeping the letter straight, what you have to do is bend the type bar down here just above the joint area. So for instance, we want to raise the print position on the A. I'm going to bend right here, I'm going to bend this upper part a little bit higher. That's going to raise the type bar, but also shift it to the left and make it crooked to the left. And then the top part, before you get to the joint here, you bend it back so the upper part is straight again. And the ideal situation is going to be where, of course, the type bar goes into the type guide evenly, right in the middle there, and the letter is going to be straight left to right and not crooked, angled, and it'll be at the right height. So really you're going to be putting two bends on the type bar, one down here and then one up here. Now if it was a type bar closer to the middle of the segment like this one, then to actually raise or lower it it's a lot more difficult because you actually have to bend the type bar on the side this way, and that's where you need one of those special type bar bending tools that were uh, the in the service kit uh, of typewriter technicians back in the day. But out here on the end of the segment, it's a lot easier to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of type a line of type with most of the characters, and I'm going to ignore the accented O's and the accented vowels, but let me just get a line of type going here. Put the A in in red, just to highlight it. Oops, there's the A again. Okay, so you can see that compared to the vowels around it, the A is sitting lower. Uh, for instance, compared to the S and the R and the D. And also, it looks like it's not printing very well on the bottom. So, uh, I'm going to have to raise it now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is immobilize the type bar down here. And I'm going to bend just above here. Then, up here, I'm going to bend the top of the back. And it's kind of trial and error. Not too bad. I think it looks better. And not only do you want to look at the alignment of the type relative to the other characters, but you want to see how the just below the type slug, how the type bar goes into the slot of the type guide. Make sure it's centered in the slot and not rubbing on one side. So this feels pretty good right there. Now one thing I also haven't addressed is the case of the typewriter. And there are rubber bushings on all four corners of the feet of the typewriter. And they're hollow. They have a little circle, circular hole in the middle. And the two front uh, feet are supposed to engage this little metal flared fitting and so when you set the typewriter down on this fitting, this fitting is on, is on the front of the base. It's supposed to fit in here and lock the typewriter, the front of the typewriter into it so it's secure in the case. Well, it only has one of these fittings. The other corner just has the screw without the fitting. And um, the, of course, this rubber fitting is also dried and cracked and so it's not really functional. And so I keep uh, an assortment of different grommets, grommet kits that you can buy from the hardware stores and a lot of these have various sizes. But this particular size here was the one that fits in the uh, semicircular hole where the front feet are. I've already replaced the one here. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out of the uh, right side and uh, it's pretty well rotted away, dry rotted. So I'll keep it as just part of the machine, the machine's legacy, but uh, I'm just going to replace this here. Put this in like that. This is the bottom foot on the underneath side of the case. It has a couple metal staples that go into the wood case and then the uh, countersunk screw and this metal collar, this threaded collar with the raised uh, flared out tip I should say. I'm going to take this up to the hardware store and just look around and see if I can't find something similar to it that I can use. Uh, if not I'll just find a wing nut and do that. So 
Okay, to try to replace the old bushings that were in this typewriter base, went up to the hardware store and I got some of these um, rubber well nuts, they call them. And they have a threaded fitting for 1024 thread. But the size of this diameter of this extension looks like it'll fit in the holes of my grommets. And they're about the same height as the old fitting that was in the typewriter. And I bought some 1024 countersunk style bolts that should be about the same length as the old bolts. So may just have to enlarge the hole slightly in the typewriter base, but maybe not even that. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so when I took off uh, this side, there's a piece of felt in there, and then underneath it is a washer. The washer that came with, of course, a metric washer is a little too small in diameter, so I got me a different washer that fits the 1024. So this is the 1024 screw, and it fits in the existing foot down here. Um, and it actually tapped or threaded through the hole quite nicely. Okay, now we're gonna take this threaded bushing Like that, and uh, do the same on the other side here. And that fits there, that's there. Now I gotta get my uh, washer, and then it goes on there, and then the old felt pad that I took off. We'll uh, try to get that set back in there. So we're just basically converting this thing from metric to American standard. <laughs> well, there it is. So I got those two on the front bottom, and here's the front top. These two rubber well nuts, and hopefully these will fit in those grommets. If you tighten up these well nuts too much, they'll expand out, and then they'll be too fat to go in the hole. So I loosened them up a couple, about a turn each, and now the grommets fit in there nice and snug. Takes just a little bit of force to pull them out, and that's kind of what you want, so it keeps the typewriter nice and secure in the case. It doesn't bang around and scratch up the top. So I think that's going to work pretty nicely. Well, okay, a new ribbon. This is a nylon ribbon. Put it on black. Nice and dark imprint. Yes, I like. As far as the ca outer case goes, it's, uh, you know, it's in old condition and there are some of the corners of the leather are dinged up here, but it's serviceable. But the big thing, I guess, is the handle was missing. The fixtures are present. They're a little corroded, but there's kind of an interesting patina on them. The latch mechanism looks like it works. You have, um, there's a central pin coming off the front of the bottom case that engages in this slot here. and when you close it down, this little pawl kind of grabs that pin, locks it, and then you push this to the right to re to unlock it again. So it looks like this whole thing is working. So I got this strap with quick disconnects from some kind of a messenger bag, and uh, I think I might use it. Kind of a shoulder strap, maybe. Or... Well, it was a fun evolution having received this surprise typewriter what a great gift and of course working on it uh, I think there's a couple lessons here for all of us if you're interested in uh, tinkering with your own typewriters which is really the most economical way to enjoy the typewriter hobby is you're never going to or usually you're never going to fix all the problems in the first go around especially when you're dealing with hardened greases and all that in these fine uh, in, uh, crevices in the machine. So you really have to hit it multiple times. Let it sit overnight, test it again in the morning, and you'll often discover an intermittent problem shows up that you didn't know was there. So uh, the lesson is perseverance and continuously testing it over time and ironing out each bug, addressing each bug as you go. As far as basic tools for servicing typewriters. Uh, a basic good set of hand tools like fine screwdrivers are nice, but I do notice that uh, a lot of the screw heads, the slotted screw heads in these older machines used different size screwdriver tips. They were thinner and wider, 
And I'm thinking that a, probably a set of gunsmithing uh, screwdrivers might be more preferable to the whatever the standard hardware store screwdrivers that you find, at least in my experience. Specialty cleaning supplies, like I like the mascara brushes, a small children's toothbrush, and uh, I like to use isopropyl alcohol, lacquer thinner, uh, naphtha, which is like Zippo lighter fluid, things like that are really good for cleaning up inside the machine there. And just uh, be careful with uh, getting those kind of solvents on your paint, your finish, and your rubber parts, and you'll be fine. But uh, this uh, typewriter came out really just lovely. Open it. And I am kind of interested in the fact that my little strap seems to have worked as a makeshift carrying shoulder carry until I can maybe figure something else out regarding a, a handle. But I really I kind of like putting the weight of it on my shoulder instead of just carrying it by hand. Got a new ribbon in it, and uh, boy, it's a, it's a pretty typewriter. Well, appreciate all the things that you guys do as watchers and viewers uh, of this channel, your faithful viewership. I really appreciate, and I really do thrive on the online fellowship that we have uh, through this channel. And until next time, Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.